Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be the latest edition of the grittiest take as we talk about how the last 10 years of draft, starting with the 2010 draft, have really damned the Flyers from being able to be a team that in this turmoil of falling into free fall like the video I did yesterday, check that out, and please you can subscribe down below or above in the easy to use widget. Like the team in free fall they are, they would be able to kind of recover if they had the prospect pool of, say, the LA Kings, or, say, the Ottawa Senators, who are teams that have been in free fall of late, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, it makes it easier when you hit in the years you make mistakes and get higher draft picks, and also when you hit in the middle on teams that were able to snag the Connor Garlands of the world and so on and so forth. Um, th those things really help you going forward, where the Flyers, in totality, have only had a select few of people that, now don't get me wrong, people that watch the channel know how much I love overall hockey and watch more than just the NHL. So a lot of these guys have had good careers either in the minors or in overseas leagues like Sweden, Switzerland, uh, Russia, whatever, Belarus, whatever. But that's not important here. What's important for this video is uh, what they did with the Philadelphia Flyers and um, <clears throat> and mistakes that the team made while well, the people were moving on from people um, too soon. Eventually, I will get to the infamous 2013 draft, which is a draft a lot of people talk about here in Philadelphia as being the worst, the icing on the cake type of thing. Some people even label it as, as for Paul Holmgren as a GM, which then made um, the team look and go, we need to make a change. And then they, of course, brought in Ronnie. But... Um, let's get into the uh, 2010 draft, where this one, I don't really put, <clears throat> the Flyers didn't have a first uh, two-round pick, so this draft, uh, they didn't really come in with a high chance of having a, a huge success rate. They they were able to get Michael Chaput, who has, um, with other teams, played with CBJ, with Vancouver, with Montreal, with Arizona. Uh, he has played... A good amount of games. He's actually played, uh, th well, actually, that was last year. He played 13 NHL games with Arizona. Uh, he's been a much better minor league player than NHL player. He's played 182 games, though, in the NHL, so that's nothing to scoff at, but he hasn't really produced at a high level um, while playing at the NHL level. He was their first pick um, in the third round of that draft in 2010. Uh, Michael Chaput, <clears throat> of course, I'm sure people remember time again, especially Phantoms fans, really liked him during his Phantoms tenure. Um, when he came up for the Flyers, uh, he, as a fourth-round pick, uh, showed why he was a fourth-round pick, because he had a lot of flaws in his game. He wasn't the quickest skater. He he uh, wasn't the tightest on the puck at the NHL level. He was a fun guy to watch in tenfold at the AHL level, and then was just one of those guys that was wasn't an NHL, or, and, and that's fine, that happens with guys, but the problem with our Philadelphia Flyers, of course, is, as we're seeing while we're recapping <clears throat> a draft, as I started this series with the 2010 draft, is they draft too many people uh, that fall into the category of great minor leaguers that are fun to watch, as I'm also a big fan of, fan, as, a, as a minor league fan, but for the big club, never become what they uh, hoped. Now, the next guy... We have two guys. We have uh, Michael Parks, who uh, never played an NHL game uh, that they drafted in that draft in 2010. And then the next guy after that is Nick Luco that they drafted in the sixth round, who was a defenseman, uh, played in the minors, never played an NHL game. Richard Blindstrand and Brendan Ranford, who both of them as well only played. Well, actually, Brendan Ranford, actually, I take that back. Brendan Ranford played one game in the NHL um, as a former seventh-round pick. Um, so he did get at least to live his dream of playing one game. He played with the Dallas Stars, uh, where <clears throat> where the other did not play. Uh, the latter did not play with anybody, uh, but Ramford did play with the Dallas Stars. So, um, I mean, the Flyers 2010 draft, th this one... I can't get on them as much on compared to other drafts that you see me uh, kind of examine it a little bit more in depth and get on the team a little bit more for um, the hindsight's 2020, but 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 for just failing in in gears on end where this team has to be more successful. I think Fletcher honestly 
and uh, Steel's talked about it on the Steel Flyers podcast, uh, Ron Hextall in his last few years did not draft the best, where if you actually look at some of his picks that are looking good, they're more the middle rounder guys, and he never really drafted the best earlier. Where if you look at the guys from since Fletcher's been in here for his three years, like he said at the press conference, he's actually drafted a little bit more when you look at how well guys are progressing through and through the draft and not just one or two guys here and there. So hopefully what I'm talking about now is a negative of us not doing anything in the 10 years. Hopefully maybe in this decade we can start drafting more through and through where if you look at how guys are progressing, yeah, Fletcher's not the most popular guy because of how the NHL team's doing right now, but a lot of that has to do with the other guy that was at that meeting yesterday in Dave Scott for being a terrible, and Comcast for being a terrible top-down effect. But <clears throat> when it comes to the, to, the, to the 2010 NHL draft, uh, I'm not going to give it a good grade. I mean, the Flyers get a D for that draft, but the thing is, a reason I wouldn't give it an F is there's there's no sense when you didn't even have a first-round pick. But we are going to get eventually to the most recent draft, right, where we didn't have a first-round pick this year, or, or not this year, but in this past year. Obviously, this year's draft didn't happen yet, but in the past year, we didn't have a first-round pick. And I actually think the Flyers, Picked a bunch of good catch. Ethan Sampson's playing good as a six-round pick. Uh, Brian Zanetti's playing fantastic as a fourth-round pick since you drafted him. So, like, I'll get into that later. You picked Tamala in the second round. So, it's all about just scouting, trusting your scouts. To me, it seems like the catch we have at the GM office and Fletcher have done a little bit better in their drafts if you just look at how guys have developed. But we'll have to see going forward. This 2010 draft, it wasn't a good one, but it wasn't one that the Flyers we thought was going to be great going in as fans because of just the picks you had. You didn't have anything early on, so you would have had to hit on a Shapu or on somebody else in that draft. So everybody have a great day and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget.